Robin. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Robin uh, Morris. And um, so I had a, a chat book come out recently in the midst of, you know, lockdown and quarantine. So um, this is it. And I'm going to be reading some poems from it. And I think you can see a link on this on the screen. I Instead of my name, Robin Morris, I put my link to Robin A. Morris at Weebly.com. So if you were interested, you could go to that link to um, find the page where you can buy the book. Um, and it would come to you. So you don't have to go to a bookstore <laughs> or anything. Um, so it, the book is not all nature poetry, um, although the cover, as you notice, is um, a sap bucket, and that is from right near where I live um, and one of the places I like to go, which is in Amherst, North Amherst. Um, so these poems kind of cover a lot of different places where I've been, including where I grew up in New Jersey, where I lived in New York City, and then the more recent ones cover um, or deal with put here. And those are the ones that I'm going to mostly read from uh, now. So um, the first one is called Welcome. Child, old and heavy with knowledge that began the day you were thrust into this world. Listen, a branch is tearing itself from its tree, flinging itself onto forest floor. Jays squawk displeasure like wives on the hurricane news, holding up boards and bricks to patch the emptiness opening up everywhere. Meanwhile, on my block, a house grows on a wooden frame. The one I live in is for sale. All that remains of its earlier inhabitants, a series of notches on a door lintel, marking the height of someone who stopped in 87 or moved away. If I could amass all the data on these trees, I would warn birds to secure their precarious nests. I'd sing like wind, but there is no wind. The ground with its litter of leaves registers no response to the newly fallen limb. This is the welcome you have yet to fathom. The next one is called Smut Creek. This is the creek which has always collected itself. These are the fibrous bits of thistle. Nobody fishes here. That cluster of rushes looks like a genius. Messy hair, bright ideas shooting off in every direction. I know exactly what I must do to be happy, but I can't be bothered. Tangle of root, cement slab, oak heaving up through old foundations. Ants crawl over slime traced with patterns of more soggy stems, matted leaves. I have let this happen. Creek bed, teach me not to fear tick or snake, but to watch the water bug with perfect love. Let me stay here till a busload of biologists clambers through, numbering me with the stinging, the succulent, the creatures who need no forgiveness. Um, okay. This is called Greylock. Midway up this, the tallest hill for miles, I almost didn't notice the imposters hidden among birch and oak, cloaked in vines and mist. Like the others, they grow toward the sun, but I see their brown trunks are metal rusting beneath peeling green paint on some, red paint on others. Relics of abandoned ski lifts emerge suddenly, giant skeletons trapped in time. I see my childhood flit among them, part of the distant past when these ruins were erected fresh from the foundry. I hope to follow their example and merge back into forest releasing all ambitions, dreams of swift ascent. Okay, I guess I have time for two more. Limitations, this one begins with an epigraph from Flannery O'Connor. Our limitations are our gateways to reality. Skin, nails, hair, if dropped from a height, this body breaks. 
If opened, bleeds. If walked too far, thirsts, tires, and yes, whines. Weeping and complaining, of such there is no limit. Top shelves, always out of reach, always contain a prize. On sunny days, my shadow refuses to leave me. Inside my body, like nesting dolls, the shriveled bodies of mother and grandma crouch, stripped of cancerous organs. Once in another century, those parts provided food and shelter. Meanwhile, mouth chews and swallows, chews and swallows, interrupting ethereal pursuits. Aided by gestures, this same mouth and tongue prays. The God for whom I have taken up pen speaks too quietly for my ears to tell words from river hum. Nearby is a gateway of splintered, weathered wood, separating field from field. Cattle graze at it, then look back to their work, grass chewed to manure. My hands could open the gate, keeping them in my pockets. I walk beside the fence. And I'm going to end with sticky truth. Sap buckets are up again, clinging to maple bark the way dark Doc Harlow's monkey hugged its dry, teated carpet mother. Because, as the experiment proved, we all need to cleave to something soft, whatever it secretes. Despite their yearly extractions, these maples keep growing. Me, I had to stop some years ago. Wind blows through my veins. In another more solid life, I pour sap into a vat, keep the fire lit and stir, trusting gravity enough to believe that the buckets are filling nicely, each warming degree shaking saps flow loose without even trying to be metaphorical. Seekers after sweetness, are we any more than tree and bee parasites worshiping what feeds us? Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Robin. Thank you very much.